Hello, thank God for this new week. I'm so glad to be bringing you God's truth today. Praise God. Hear me? This week, God's going to show His mercy in your life. And you should be excited about that. You know what that means? He is going to bring you so much blessings that you will not recover from. I'm speaking this by the word of the Lord to you. And that's why you must hold on to His truths. As I'm sharing with you, take seriously these words and be blessed. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we honor you today. I release your word by faith. And everyone watching and listening receives it in the same manner. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Burdens are being removed. Yokes are being destroyed right now by the power of your spirit. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Turn your Bibles with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now we are still in 1 Corinthians and let's see how the Lord's going to help us this week. Praise God. Now, we, we stopped at verse 20, 25 on Friday. And I, verse 25, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 25. It says that there should be no schism, that means division, in the body, but that the member should have the same care one for another. Now, he goes on to say, and whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoiced with it. Now that's how the body of Christ functions. We are together. We are not separate. Now see, now you know, someone, let, let me just finish this up and then I will explain something to you. Now ye are the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. And members in particular. Hmm. And God has set some in the church. First, apostles. Secondarily, prophets. Thirdly, teachers. After that, miracles. Then gifts of healings, helps, government, diversities of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, have all the gift of healings, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret? Now look at verse 31. He said, hey, but, get this now, convert earnestly the best gifts and yet show I unto you a more excellent way now what's he saying now he's he's gone on explaining how we are one body now you need to understand we are one body and then he says we are members in particular so in this body of christ there are different members there are di and every one member is very important so he says we shouldn't treat one member more important than the other they are all important now you see but first thing we need to understand first is this You need to first of all know and be sure before you say I'm a member of the body of Christ that truly you are. And how do you know you are? When you have received the Holy Spirit and you dwell in Him. See, there are two things. If you don't dwell in Him, you will be cut off from His body. Oh yeah. You know, Jesus said, He says, if a man does not abide in me. Now, you need to come to Him first. Then abide in Him. The thing is not about the coming to him. The thing is the abiding in him. And Jesus said this in John 15, that if a man does not abide in him, he is cut off. He is put forth as a branch. See? You're cut off as a branch. So it's not to say I got born again 20 years ago. Are you still in him today? Oh, can I get born again and then leave? Oh, of course. You know, people, people have all kinds of ideas that the moment you're born again, you're born again. You are not, you cannot be unborn. Who's told you that? Have you realized that there are angels who lost their first estate? Ange these are angelic beings made that way. They lost their position. 
Why? By choice. They choose to walk in ways that does not line up with heaven. And they lost their place in heaven. So I don't get it. So you can choose from this day that, okay, I don't want to be born again again. <laughs> you know, it's not by force. You will lose your inheritance. You will lose. See, that's why David prayed. He said, Lord, don't take away your Holy Spirit from me. Don't, please don't do it. Because it is the Holy Spirit. That the, when you stop functioning by the Holy Spirit, when you stop living your life by the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, as many as are led by the Holy Spirit, they are the sons of God. Not those who were led 10 years ago. Not those who were led 5 years ago. Today, are you conscious that you are being led by the Holy Spirit? You need to know that you are led by the Holy Spirit. That is how you can say that you are a child of God. Praise God. So he says, he says, now you are, verse 27 again, now you are the body of Christ and members in particular. You are a member of the body of Christ because of the Holy Spirit that is in you. The connection, I told you that yes, on, on last week, the connection with you, with us, is the Holy Spirit. That is our connection. You need to get this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And I says, it says, see, because the body has different members. Now that he goes on to explain. And God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondary prophets, thirdly teachers. Now God has set these. Now these, these are these are what we do in the body. See, he says, apostles. Now, what do apostles do? Apostles lead the way. See, they lead the way. Now that is that is who they are. That's what their concern is all about. And then he says, he says, secondary prophets. Now you know what though, you know. Now this talking about the office of a prophet in the body of Christ. Because see, God doesn't leave us directionless. Even though we are individually led by the Holy Spirit, God still maintains order. Even if angels are spirit beings, you understand? There is still order in the hierarchy of angels, and they don't break ranks angels that broke ranks they are cast out so even though we are all members of the of the body of christ and we are all connected baptized in the holy ghost connected with the holy spirit there is still other in our arrangement see there is and you need to respect that order you don't say i don't submit to anybody every uh, I'm, I'm only submitted to god huh even the scriptures admonishes us that we should submit to one another as it is fitting. We submit to one another. The life of submission is one of the, one of the attributes or one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. A submissive life. When, when someone is, cannot be submissive, when you hear someone say, I can only be submissive to the Holy Spirit, you, you know that that person is not even submissive to the Holy Spirit. Because you, yeah, I want the Holy Spirit to speak to me first before, before I, 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 I do anything. Come on. You see, first of all, you, you are denying that the Holy Spirit can speak to someone else to you. Choose someone else to you. Now, which is what he does. Now, what do I need to do? Confirmation. First of all, have the heart of submission. The same thing with humility. You have to be humble. Humble. I pray you understand these things. So he says, prophet. Now that's talking about office of the prophet. And then he says, totally teachers. Teachers. Who's a prophet? A prophet who is the one who divinely gets clear direction from God for God's children. Now, does it see? We, you see, the mistake we've made to, the, uh, to, to a large extent is when we bring in denominations into this. In the body of Christ, there are apostles. In the body of Christ, there are prophets. That is their work. That is their ministry. That is their assignments to the body. Do you understand that? Their assignments to the body. In every gathering, hear me, in every gathering, you will find these things. You will find the apostles. You will find the prophets. You will find the teachers. You will find, you, in every, even if, 
see, first of all, it's the Holy Spirit that does this administration. Are you getting it? The Holy Spirit does this administration. Now, we follow his leading. That's what we do. We follow his leading. You know, I was sharing with, with you know, in our fellowship one time, and I said, listen, wherever God's children are gathered, it's not the name, I'm an apostle, Apostle John Jacob. No, it's the work itself. When we gather and we're trying to get something done, the spirit of an apostle is surely resting on someone. And when he rises up to carry out that ministry, the same thing with the spirit of a prophet, the spirit of a teacher. The spirit, see, he listed, say, totally teachers, after that work, my miracles, then the gifts of healing, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. The body of Christ is complete if you would just take, it, take away the schism. Take away the division from amongst us. It's complete. Because what you don't have wisdom for, someone else have gotten wisdom concerning it already. So will you discard his wisdom because they didn't come from you? No! The fact that God has released that wisdom. You know the Lord told me something. Oh, he's blessed. He said, God only speaks once. It took me a while to get what he meant. Because that's what he just said. He just said, God only speaks once. And I connected it with what David said. Once have I heard. Once have God spoken. Twice have I heard. And then the Lord told me, he says, when you hear it again, you hear it from someone else. Now, not because God spoke to you and then now God went to speak to that person. When he spoke once, every ear heard it. Now, what happens next? People that heard it will now speak. And then we will now begin to bear witness with one another. Oh, yeah, I heard the same thing. Oh, I heard the same thing. Oh, I heard. We all heard it when God spoke. Now, that sound, when God spoke, that sound keeps flowing on the earth. So you may hear your own 10 years after. It doesn't mean that was the day God spoke. He had already spoken about it. I pray you understand. See, that's why Paul says, these things are, are the spirit. This is the realm of the spirit. And I want you to understand it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He says, are all apostles? Oh, everybody cannot be an apostle. Everybody cannot function in that office of an apostle. Everybody cannot function as a teacher. See? If, 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 you know, see, the Lord was telling me something one time. You know, I was asking the Lord, I said, Lord, how come John, the disciple John, the beloved, it seems that, that there was a connection between two of you, right? Because we read in scripture, John even was too close to Jesus. He was leaning on Jesus when they sat together. Yeah, and every other apostle knew. Even Peter had to, like John, ask him, I know he would tell you. But I was asking the Lord, I said, how come John was the closest to you? Yet, you didn't hand over the, your work when you left to him. You handed it over to Peter. You know that's the truth, right? He handed it over to Peter. Well, so when Jesus said, thou art Peter, upon this rock I'll build my church. That's exactly what he meant. What we don't understand, and that's why those confessions came in. What we don't understand, what he meant by I will build my church. You think he wants to carry cement and block on build on one man's head? No. Now, how did he build his church with, on Peter? Remember, when, 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 when Jesus resurrected and, and left, you remember one time the disciples went fishing. Who did Jesus go to scold? Peter. On the day of Pentecost, who did Jesus talk to? Who, who spoke and announced the church? Peter. The first time the gospel was good to go to the Gentiles, who did God send? Peter. That's what he meant. So I said, Lord, why didn't you hand over the church to John? Why Peter? And the Lord said something to me. If I had handed it over to John, the church wouldn't have moved an inch. Because John himself was not an evangelist. He was a teacher. A teacher is not concerned about, you know, he doesn't have that force 
and that push. He, he, he wants everyone to sit down and understand it. It's good. But Peter has the ability to push. And as I later called, God brought in Paul. Everyone has his own role to play. That's why he says here, but covet earnestly the best gifts. And then he says, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. I'm going to begin to who going to who going to start entering this more excellent way by tomorrow. Listen, you have a right to any gift. All for your benefits. And that's what you should praise God for. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Have the best day ever. Bye-bye.